The Newfoundland Expedition French, Expedition à Terra Nova, Spanish, Expedición à Terra Nova was a series of fleet maneuvers and amphibious landings in the coasts of Newfoundland, Labrador and Saint-Pierre and Miquelon carried out by the combined French and Spanish fleets during the French Revolutionary Wars. This expedition, composed of seven ships of the line and three frigates under the orders of Rear Admiral Richery sailed from Cadiz in August 1796 accompanied by a much stronger Spanish squadron, commanded by General Solano, which had the aim of escorting it to the coast of Newfoundland. On 28 August 1796 this combined Franco-Spanish squadron of 20 vessels, carrying 1,500 regular troops, appeared off the coast of Newfoundland. Considerable alarm was occasioned in England by the first accounts of these events in Newfoundland, the news being to the effect that the French had actually landed 1,500 men at Bay Bulls and 2,000 at Portugal Cove in Conception Bay, from which they were marching against St. John's, one of the most heavily fortified ports of North America, alongside New York Harbor and Boston, boasting one castle, five fortresses, six separate gun emplacements, and a defensive boom protecting the harbor entrance. At St. John's the local garrison of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, the Royal Artillery, the Royal Newfoundland Volunteers, aided by most able-bodied men, established a camp atop Signal Hill at the beginning of September. A boom was constructed across the harbour and three fire ships prepared. French Admiral Joseph de Richery, decided not to land after he saw this force, and after hovering in the area for several days, he chose instead to land at Bay Bulls, 18 miles south of St. John's. On 4 September, on 4 September the expedition entered the town of Bay Bulls, and there being no sufficient force to protect Newfoundland, it was ravaged with fire and destruction, and a great deal of mischief was done to the fisheries. After taking dozens of British prisoners, the combined fleet sailed towards Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, which were held by the British at that time, and remained near the islands for two weeks, taking on water and preparing for the voyage back to France and Spain. The combined expedition destroyed over 100 fishing vessels from the Newfoundland fleet and burned fishing stations along the Newfoundland coast, including the base of the English garrison at Placentia Bay. Background. Topic. On 19 August a treaty of alliance, offensive and defensive, between France and Spain was signed at San Ildefonso, by which the latter power was to have a fleet in readiness to assist the French. The treaty was ratified in Paris on 12 September, and on 5 October a declaration of war by Spain against Great Britain was issued from Madrid. The fleet, under the command of Don Juan de Langara, put to sea from Cadiz. Ten sail of the line under the flag of Rear Admiral Solano were dispatched to join with a French force consisting of seven sail of the line and three frigates, under Rear Admiral Richery, in an expedition against the British settlement of Newfoundland. In August 1796, both Canada and Nova Scotia were stirred by the news that Admiral Richery had escaped the vigilance of Admiral Robert Mann out of Cadiz, and was proceeding to Newfoundland with seven sail of the line and several frigates. Against this force, Vice Admiral Wallace at St. John could only oppose the old Romney of 50 guns, 232s and 216s. Captain Taylor, in Andromeda, of 32 guns, had parted for the banks with orders to cruise there for the protection of the sea trade. On 3 September he spoke with a schooner, the master of which informed him that he had seen on the coast an enemy's fleet, consisting of several ships of the line and frigates. Subsequent reports increased alarm on the mainland by telling of French landings in Conception Bay. Attempt on St. John's Topic. Richery made for St. John's, estimating that with his superior firepower, he could pound Fort Amherst into submission. However, upon entering the harbour, he would have to contend with the three smaller forts William, Waldgrave, Chainrock, a guard tower, and one of the largest fortresses in North America, Fort Townsend. Therefore, landing on the interior of the harbour was not seen as a feasible goal. Outnumbered at sea, the British retired behind the forts and batteries of St. John's and prepared to put up stiff resistance. It was the morning of 2 September 1796 when the French fleet was sighted off the coast. Wallace did not have a large garrison in St. John's at the time, so he tried to give the impression that he had. 
This was intended to make the French believe that St. John's would be too costly to try to take. He had his men erect tents on both sides of the entrance to the Narrows and then marched them to and fro at Fort Amherst and below Signal Hill. Richery was handicapped by having no intelligence of the defences of St. John's and no pilots for Newfoundland waters. He had to depend for information on John Moorage, master of a fishing ship belonging to Governor Wallace, who was one of the prisoners taken at Bay Bulls. Richery's huge fleet hove to off Cape Spear for a day observing the dawning sight. The next morning, Richery formed a battle line and drove for the harbour entrance. As they came within the range of the 24-pounders at Fort Amherst, his resolve weakened. Tacking the great ships, he headed back out to sea. The ruse had worked and the town saved. Admiral Richery's threat to St. John's finally came to nothing in face of the vigor of the new governor, Admiral Sir Richard Wallace, who raised volunteers, strengthened the forts, and prepared new batteries. In France, the public were informed that Richery had forced the surrender of St. John's and captured large quantities of shipping and sent more than a thousand sailors as prisoners to Santo Domingo. Not until October did authentic information reach England, when it was learned that the French admiral had given up the larger plan of an assault on St. John's and had left the coast on 29 September. <laughs> Bay Bulls On 4 September the French squadron entered Bay Bulls. The town surrendered on their approach. Admiral Richery plundered and destroyed the entire settlement and shipping, including the fishing stages, driving the inhabitants into the woods. Fifty-seven buildings and forty-seven fishing ships were captured along with more than four hundred prisoners. <laughs> Chateau Bay On 5 September, Richery detached ADM. Zachary Jacques Théodore Comte Alamand, to raid the Bay of Castles Labrador with Duquesne, Censor, and Fripon while Richery himself proceeded to Saint-Pierre and Miquelon with Victoire, Barris, Jupiter, Berwick, and Revolution 74s, and frigates Embuscade and Félicité to visit a like treatment upon its shore establishments. Delayed by head winds and fogs, M. Alamand did not enter the Bay of Castles until of September, by which time most of the fishing vessels had departed for Europe. The French Commodore sent an officer with a flag of truce demanding the surrender of the town. This was refused, but the approach of the squadron compelled the British commanding officer to destroy the fishing stages. <laughs> Raid on Saint-Pierre and Miquelon Richery destroyed all the buildings, vessels, and fishing stages he found at Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, claiming the islands for France but leaving them unpopulated. Approximately 225 houses, 17 large scaffolds, 8 large buildings, 80 fishing boats and 80,000 quintals of cod were burnt to the ground. Admiral Richery hoisted the French flag on the island of Saint-Pierre, which had surrendered to a force from Halifax years before, but had been left without a garrison, though a number of British fishermen had taken possession and built a town. Richery's squadron then divided, and a portion sailed for the coast of Labrador to intercept the homeward-bound fishing fleet from Quebec while Admiral Richery remained near Cape Breton with four sail of the line and a frigate. On 27 September, Admiral Murray arrived at Halifax from Bermuda. Although the information presented to him was still confused, the apparent lack of transports and troops indicated that the expedition was a raid rather than a serious attempt to take Newfoundland. Two days later, Alamand stood away from the coast, and, as Richery had already done, steered homeward. On 5 November, Richery, with his division, entered the port of Rochefort, and on 15 Alamand with his reached Lorient. Aftermath Topic. The combined fleets of France and Spain had destroyed upwards of 100 merchant vessels, and taken a great number of prisoners. Some were sent in a cartel to Halifax, and the remainder, about 300 in number, were carried into France and Spain. The British bank fisheries in Newfoundland recovered following the signing of the Treaty of Amiens in March 1802, and in that year, 71 Newfoundland and 58 British banker vessels prosecuted the fisheries on the Grand Banks. 
They declined again with the outbreak of war in 1803 and recovered somewhat after the Battle of Trafalgar in October 1805, but declined again during the Anglo-American War of 1812–14. Popular literature the Spanish novelist Arturo Pérez Revert cites this expedition in one of his works, Cabo Trafalgar, un relato naval. See also Governors of Newfoundland Notes Topic References Topic Topic External Links Topic Biography at Government House The Governorship of Newfoundland and Labrador